What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here and moving on to the next question dealing with continuity. So we have to graph each of these functions here. There's three functions and then explain why it's discontinuous at each given x value. And to explain why it's discontinuous, I'm going to do it in detail using that definition of continuity and which one of these points it fails. Sometimes it may even fail multiple points. So I'm gonna erase two and three for now, just to give myself some room. So we have f of x equals one over x plus three squared at an x value negative three. And notice that an x value negative three, the function is gonna be undefined. The denominator is gonna be zero, so we know there's going to be a vertical asymptote there. So a rough sketch of this, so let's actually, um, I'll start off by graphing one over x plus three. And then I'll show you the difference between one over x plus three and one over x plus three squared. So one over x plus three, the vertical asymptote is at x equals negative three as well. It's just the graph one over x that's shifted three to the left. So it basically looks like that. So this is one over x plus three. Now one over x plus three squared, notice that it can never be negative. So notice here with one over x plus three, there are negative y values, right? It's below the x-axis. But notice that with one over x plus three squared, everything's always going to be positive because any negative number here when you square it, it's going to turn positive, and then you always have a positive one up top. So this graph, it looks similar, except this part gets reflected up there. So there's still going to be a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. Just the graph is going to look like that. All right, so let me erase this here. So this here is, uh, is the graph for one over x plus three squared. And from the graph, we could tell it's discontinuous at that x value of negative three. Now, why? It's discontinuous at x equals negative three because a couple of points, there's a vertical asymptote but if we explain it in more detail, relating it to the definition of continuity, notice what's the limit as x approaches negative three of the function. Well, notice that it's going towards positive infinity. So that limit is equal to positive infinity, but notice that f of negative three is undefined. And so it fails that second point here, where f of a has to be defined if the function's continuous at that x value of a. And then uh, one and two have to equal. That is condition number three. But notice that we're failing condition number two for this graph at this x value negative three because at that x value of negative three, this function is undefined. And then moving on to number two, we got f of x equals two x minus one when x is less than or equal to one and then two to the power of x minus three when x is greater than one. So we got a piecewise function and we got to explain why it's discontinuous at this x value of one. So let's first graph it. I'm gonna make a table of values for both of these functions separately. So we got two x minus one. Notice this is when x is less than or equal to one. So let's start off with one and then go to the left. So we got one, zero, negative one, and then let's go negative two. So if we plug in all these x values here, we would end up with one, negative one, negative three, negative five. So that's the table for this function, that left piece of this whole piecewise function. And then the other table, we got two to the power of x minus three. Now notice this is the function when x is greater than one. I'm still gonna put a one here and if we plug in one here, we would end up getting negative one. Two to the power of one is two, minus three is negative one. But this here, just as a heads up, is a whole. 
because it's not defined at that x value. But we still want to put that x value to see what's happening around there. And then uh, let's pick some x values greater than 1. So let's go 2 and uh, 3. Just because 4, it's going to start getting, uh, we're going to start having large y values. I want to keep the y values a little bit smaller so I can graph it properly. So if I plug in 2 for this x value, 2 to the power of 2, 4 minus 3 is 1. Uh, 2 to the power of 3 is 8, minus 3 is 5. So with this table, or with these tables, I'm going to make a graph here. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, we got uh, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's plot these points first. So we got 1 and 1 here. We got 0 and negative 1 here. We got negative 1 and negative 3 here, and then negative 2, negative 5 down here. So notice this is just a line, 2x minus 1, just looking something like that. And now this function, we got 1 and negative 1, which is over here. Remember, that's going to be a whole. 2 and 1, that's going to be here. And then 3 and 5, which would be up here. So notice this here is an exponential function. So it looks something like that, and it's just going to keep rising and rising. Right? Could have maybe uh, spread this uh, graph out a little bit more. But uh, anyway, that's how that piecewise function looks. So from the graph, we can tell it's going to be discontinuous at that x value of 1. Why? Well. If we describe it in words, there's a jump discontinuity. But if we go through these conditions here, notice that the limit as x approaches 1 of this function does not exist because it's approaching different y values from each side. So notice the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side is equal to positive 1, right? When we approach this x value of 1 here from the negative side, we're approaching a y value of positive 1. We could see that there. But the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side of f of x, as we approach this 1 from the positive side, we're approaching a y value of negative 1. And so since we're approaching different y values from both sides, it means that the limit as x approaches 1 in general of f of x does not exist. And so it fails that first condition right there. And that's why it is uh, discontinuous at that x value of 1. And then notice condition 2, f of 1 is actually defined. Right? There's a solid dot here. f of 1 is actually equal to 1. This point right here. But even though um, the function is defined, because that limit does not exist, it means the function is discontinuous at that x value of 1. And then finally, moving on to number 3, we got f of x equals x squared minus x minus 2 all over x minus 2. That's for all x values other than 2 when x is not equal to. And then the function is equal to 5 when x is equal to 2. And we have to show or explain why this function is discontinuous at that x value of 2. So first thing I'm going to do is graph this. And this function here, we can actually simplify this. Notice that we can factor that numerator to x minus 2, x plus 1, still all over x minus 2. And then notice that the x minus 2 factors cancel out. And so what this ends up being is the line x plus 1 with a hole at an x value of 2. 
because notice at that x value of 2, that's the uh, x value that makes that factor that canceled out equal to 0. So really what we have to do is just graph x plus 1, make sure there's a hole at x equals 2, because um, notice that, so, sorry, let me, uh, we can pretty much rewrite this here as x plus 1 when x does not equal to 2. Because we already know when x is equal to 2, there's going to be a hole. And for all the rest of the x values, it's just going to equal x plus 1. And then this is going to be 5 at an x value of 2. So this and this are the same thing. So if we graph x plus 1, there's going to be a y-intercept of 1, and then the slope's going to be 1. So if I roughly draw this, it's just going to be a line like this. But at that x value of 2, there's going to be a hole there. And at what y value is that hole happening? Well, if we plug in 2 for this x value here, the factor that's remaining, we would end up with 3. Right? So that's this function here. And then notice that for the entire piecewise function, at that x value 2, it's defined at that y value 5. So there's going to be a solid dot up here. And that's going to be 5 right there. So this here is the graph for this. We just took this function here and simplified it to x plus 1 because those x minus 2's canceled out, which means there's a hole at x is equal to 2. That's going to be at a y value of 3. You just plug in that x value 2 for the factor that's remaining. You can't plug it in initially because that denominator is going to be 0. You have to plug in that x value 2 in that remaining factor. So that's that function. But then uh, there's a y value of 5 that's defined at that x value 2 for that entire piecewise function. And from here we can tell it's discontinuous at that x value of 2. Why is it? Well, in words, basically there's going to be a hole there. But if we're to be more specific, Let's go through the conditions and see which one it fails. So notice that the limit as x approaches, what are we approaching here? 2, in this case, of f of x. What does it equal? Well, notice it equals 3. Right, so that's condition 1. So the limit does actually exist for this function. And it's approaching that y value of 3 from both sides. And so that's what that limit is equal to. Also notice that the function is defined. So notice that f of 2 is equal to 5, that solid dot right there. So this piecewise function is defined at that x value 2, has a y value of 5. So the limit exists, the function is defined, so conditions 1 and 2 pass, but notice that condition 3 fails because the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, which is equal to 3, does not equal f of 2, which is equal to 5. And so in this case, it's condition 3 that fails. Right? If both of them were equal, then this function would be continuous. So sometimes you can get conditions 1 and 2 passing but then condition 3 fails. Usually that happens when there's like a hole and then there's another y value for which the function is defined. Now, if this said 3 over here, then it would be defined at that hole, this whole piecewise function, and then the function would be continuous, right? So just be careful with that as well. But because there was a different y value, something other than 3, this could have been anything other than 3, it's, uh, it's discontinuous because of this whole condition 3 fails.